Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. We're going to be looking at a property at 1659 Cooper, which is in the uh, neighborhood of Northside. Northside is a, a really eclectic, interesting, and, and very developing neighborhood that's got a long history in Cincinnati. This particular building is on the auditor's site is uh, stated it built in 1900, uh, but the listing agent who gave us a tour the other day told us that the first uh, concrete uh, structured building in Cincinnati wasn't built till you know, five or six years after that. So he, he doesn't have much faith in that in that timing. But I'm going to take you through this building, which um, my client wants to redevelop in the future to be a workspace uh, condo project or a uh, or a single family residence, which would be a, a large workspace and a uh, a large home above it. Um, the property as it stands is listed for one hundred and eighty five thousand, and it's zoned commercial uh, manufacturing. So. From a loan standpoint, a traditional mortgage is not going to work on a property like this. It um, it sits on 0.4 acres. The auditor has the square footage at 7680, and it feels every bit of that. Its uh, interior dimensions are 56 feet by 68 feet. Um, so I'm going to take you through this building. We're going to start on the first floor. When you walk into the door, you have a choice to go through upstairs or through a room. So we went through the room. It has it's a small little office. It has a powder room adjoining, and then you walk into the garage bays. the 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 interior ceiling height in this area is uh, ten foot uh, eight inches approximately. And that's from finished floor to the underside of the beam. The, uh, the structure is a post and beam uh, cast in place or poured in place concrete. Uh, there's no basement to this, so it's a slab on grade. It's a true masonry building, so it's brick exterior, brick interior. And all of the electric is run on the uh, surface via conduits. There's a three-phase system as well as a 120 system coming into the building. So it has two major electric services. It does have plumbing. Uh, it is limited uh, to just the east side of the property. The, um, the property has four bay garages on the first floor and on the second floor. Originally, this building was used as part of a uh, lumber mill or sawmill operation. Uh, there's not believed to be any uh, chemicals that have you know, been used in a uh, manufacturing setting. So we're, we're thinking from a purchase standpoint that a phase two would not be necessary, but you would want to do your due diligence with the phase one audit. When you walk through this building, you'll see uh, this beautiful concrete work and you, if you go to the far west side of the building you find this freight elevator and the freight elevator is uh, presumably you know, four foot wide by probably six to seven foot deep and it's on a hoist and pulley system and the wheel at the top must measure every bit of uh, probably 30 to 36 inches in diameter. It's really neat and uh, definitely could be restored, but currently is not functioning. It um, it has windows on the first floor. I think from a security standpoint, you would want to close those up. And right now, we're thinking that this first floor would just be a garage or flexible space for a, uh, a home-based business or a hobbyist and then your living quarters would be upstairs. So now you can see we're on the second floor. This is looking back down the staircase. It's a poured in place concrete stair. The rise and run is is not to code so it feels like you're gonna fall down it. Uh, I guess the tread is probably a six inch tread where 
code right now is 12 and on a stair and a, a gracious stair is every bit of 12 to 14 inches. So it is definitely obsolete. The, um, the, the top of the stairs walks you into an office and they had a drop ceiling in here, which you can see is, is caved in a little bit with some water damage. There does not seem to be an active leak. There is some uh, white oxidation on some of the lumber, but it's not, um, it, it wasn't a um, long-term perennial issue. It, the general maintenance of this building has been really good over the years. It, um, it's roughly a, a standard two by 12 roof rafter and it, it measures 12 and a half to 13. They're all hand, hand sawn wood. The posts on this are every bit of um, 18 to 21 inches. And there's six laminated two bys that join with that. So again, it's probably about 16 inch wide beams that are carried, carried throughout this, this second floor. For some reason, they enclosed a furnace within a CMU wall, which we would definitely take down. And to to keep this build this second floor as open as possible would be the our best intention. But from a cost standpoint, I don't think we could get the return on investment that we're looking for by doing that. But it's a really neat space. It's very special. You'd have to insulate the roof, which would be really expensive. Um, but the roof uh, per the listing agent is approximately 1989. So its life is, is pretty much due now. And so you would do a rigid foam system or something like that, uh, do a sleeper roof on top of the current roof, foam it, and then you would have exposed um, beams and undersides throughout the entire second floor. On the back side of the property, which is the south side, it has a great opportunity for a deck where the building on the second floor bumps in. There's currently a roof there and there's air conditioning compressors uh, that, that sit there. And I think the air conditioning compressors should go to the uppermost roof or be just cantilevered off the side of the building. And you have those windows cut down to be doors and you have a really nice uh, French doored veranda that is either your major entrance or it's a private patio, private deck that overlooks some parking and potentially a uh, some kind of cutting garden, uh, kitchen garden that you could um, plant on this quarter or on this uh, 0.4 acres. The elevator, of course, is evident and very prominent within the west wall of the building and you can see the wheel that's just beautiful and it has not been certified by the uh, by the city so it's not rated for um, human use and I don't think I would trust it myself but it's just a really neat relic that shows uh, the history of the building and I think that would be incorporated within the design but I think we'd close it up from a fire separation standpoint, uh, just for health and safety reasons. Um, the four large uh, bay doors that are on the second floor that are the loft doors, I would preserve and put um, in-swing French doors on those as well and let that carry through a lot of nice natural light. It would honor the historical uh, context of it if you got the right door design and I would just have a gate on the out, outer edge that keeps uh, people from falling out so something like a uh, that you'd see in a French veranda is the it would be the concept here the um, the overall feeling of the area is the biggest sense of hesitance on this on redeveloping this building because it's very um, heavy uh, vacant lands and commercial and uh, manufacturing there's a rigging company that takes up quite a bit of land with parking trailers and then some of the residential that's in the area 
is definitely below market. And by below market, it's less than half uh, our owner occupants, which is um, lower than, than desired when you're trying to create an over the market uh, redevelopment project. And one positive, you know, very positive thing is as you go east towards, um, towards the core of Northside, there is redevelopment within that stretch. And that gives me hope that, um, that positive change will come down Cooper and come to the corner of Cooper and Cherry one of these days. And this building will see a second life. Thanks for coming with me on this journey. It's going to continue to be a pipe dream for us. Um, but until the city of Cincinnati commits to that zoning regulation change, it um, unfortunately is too big of a gamble, especially with the purchase price in the uh, 185 range. Negotiating room on it um, you know, exists, but from a highest and best use in its current state, it's for manufacturing because that's what it's zoned for. We want to use it for residential, and there's going to be a lot of retrofit costs associated with this when you're talking about uh, doing roof windows building out the interior on the second floor and pretty much rewiring replumbing the entire thing so our rough budgets on it are that you'd have to invest minimum two hundred thousand in capital and there's a very lean amount of profit on this project but there's some land so there's good potential for future um, for future upside. But thanks again for joining me on it. I'll keep you posted and be careful out there buying.